What's up? I'm Coach Colin Castell with Shop Mechanics Fastball. Today, I'm going to teach you how to get your perfect form. So finding your perfect form is incredibly important. All great shooters are going to shoot a little bit differently, so we want to find what works best for you. Now, before we jump into it today, what I want you to do is click the link in the description down below and get a free copy to my seven-day shooting challenge. This is seven days worth of workouts that are going to increase your shooting percentage probably immediately, and after the seven days, we're going to turn you into a beast. So you want to click the link down below because it's 100% free. Now, when we think about your perfect form, I always like to think about generating power first, right? From the base, moving up through, through your body, because this is something that, that you know, kind of gets messed up on a lot of players. Um, jump shots, you know, lack of power is one of the biggest things that I see all the way from you know third graders, fourth graders, all the way up through a lot of college players is that they don't get the mechanics right to optimize their power. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you two tips that are gonna help you generate more power. So the very first one is with our feet. Instead of being squared to the basket, we want to tilt our feet off to the side just a little bit. So if I'm a right-handed player, I'm going to tilt my feet to the left just slightly. And if I'm a left-handed player, I'm going to tilt my feet off to the right just slightly. Now this is, is good for twofold. Number one, it relieves a ton of shoulder tension in your upper body, right? If I'm squared to the hoop and I bring the ball up my shot line, I get a ton of tension because the way my muscles are wrapped around my shoulder, it's hard to push it up through, right? So that's going to immediately lose some power. And if you think about shooting, it's a game of inches, right? You might miss a shot by half an inch, and that might be the difference right there. So a lot of times we see if we can tilt athletes' feet when they're getting ready to shoot, a lot of times they get a little extra power just right away. I've had players that can only shoot from the mid-range start shooting threes immediately just by this one tip. So one thing you want to think about is everybody's going to be a little bit different with how far they tilt their feet, and we want to be results-based. That's how you find your perfect form. So try everything. Try it with a bigger tilt. Maybe you're tilting out far, farther. Try it with a small tilt and see what gives you the best results, right? Again, be an individual. Know about your own form and be a self-aware shooter knowing exactly what works best for you. So that's tip number one for power. Tip number two for power, think about loading the basketball a little bit lower. I always see players set it on what I call the shelf, meaning that when they're getting ready to shoot, their hips are loaded and the ball's up here by their shoulder or by their chest. Now the issue is we don't get a lot of upper momentum that way and it loses a ton of power. So it's almost like an uppercut punch. I've used this analogy on the channel before, but it's great. If I'm throwing an uppercut punch and I start my punch right here, I can only get so much power into it, right? Because there's not much movement and momentum. But if I'm gonna throw a hard uppercut punch, if I can dip it down and swing it up through, now I get all that momentum, my hips can get more engaged and I can get more power. Shooting basketball is the exact same way. I can get a ton more power if I just load it a little bit lower and fire into my shot just like that. So it's loading lower, kind of down more by my waist or by my thigh. And as I come up through, now I get all this extra momentum and energy that can transfer into the basketball and immediately give me more power. A lot of times it's gonna give, give you more range absolutely immediately, right? Now the key, the absolute key to this is that, you know, you wanna keep your downward motion fast. So if I catch, I don't wanna load slow, I wanna load fast, and that's gonna keep my jumper fast so a defender can't get a hand, they can't challenge it as well. All right, so the next thing we wanna to do to find your perfect shooting form is we wanna eliminate your left to right misses, and there's two great ways to do this. Now the very first, you know, there's, there's kind of an old saying that goes, a great shooter is a straight shooter. I mean, if we can keep our ball straight, you're gonna be a much better shooter because you've eliminated those left to right misses. So there's two kind of keys that can help you out with this. And, and you know, out of the majority of players, these are two that I see a ton. So the very first thing you can do to keep the ball straight is to keep your follow through straight. Now this seems fairly self-explanatory, but on your release, as I snap through on my finish, if I can keep my hand straight down through the basket, that's gonna guide the ball straighter. I see a ton of times younger kids are catching and they're getting ready to shoot, and their arm comes across their face like this, or it goes out to the side. Right? What I would do is, I, if I was you, I would really work on getting in the habit of every time you shoot, freeze it for a little extra second and self-check to see if your fingers are going down through the basket. If you are, odds are it's probably going to be flying pretty straight. That's a really easy fix and it's one that a lot of players forget about. So that's the first one to keep it straight. The second one to keep it straight is something that a lot of coaches don't talk about, but I love and that's called body space. So when you're getting ready to shoot the basketball, you want to keep a little space between your body and the ball. What we see a lot of times is, especially younger players, try to get a lot of power. So as they're getting ready to shoot, they bring the ball close to their body, closing this gap. And that's bad because what it does is it pushes their elbow out, right? So as, as I bring the ball close to my body, see how my elbow starts to push out? So when they go to shoot, now their elbow's out of alignment. We've got that dreaded chicken wing that we always see. And then as they're coming off, their arm is not straight. 
So the number one thing you can do to eliminate that chicken wing that's pushing out is you can try to get some space between your body and the basketball. So if instead, if I bring it out farther away from my chest, that allows my elbow to stay underneath of it and in turn will keep the ball a lot straighter, right? This is a tip that just works for some players, especially younger players, and it's a great way to help you find your perfect form. All right, so the next tip that can help you find your perfect jump shot is to find your flow. And by flow, I mean that when you shoot the basketball, it should start a little bit lower like we talked about earlier, and it should be a smooth motion all the way through your shot, right? A lot of times this is gonna give you more power, it's gonna give you more accuracy, it's gonna give you more consistency. So there's a couple different ways that we can kind of help that out. Number one, we wanna start the flow the right way. And so a great way to think about it is to tap your shooting elbow to your outside hip. So if I'm getting ready to shoot the basketball and I catch or I'm pulling off the dribble, if I can tap my shooting elbow to my hip right here, it's gonna load the ball lower and it's gonna give me the start to that optimal flow, right? For flow, I like to think about it like a waterfall. It wants to be smooth and fall all the way through. So as I catch, if I can go elbow to hip, ball's gonna be lower, that way I can start my flow. Now the next thing we want to think about with flow is you want to snap it off, right? A lot of players will get good motion in their shot and then they just kind of release really softly towards the hoop, right? They get kind of nervous and they kind of, uh, kind of cast it like this, right? But instead we want to snap that shot off. A lot of times if you, if you see the best shooters in slow motion, their falls are actually bounces like this because they're getting so much snap from their hand. So a great way to make sure that you're doing that is as you come up, Think about having one major finger. If you're a middle finger shooter, that's great. If you're an index finger shooter, that's great. Whatever it is, have that finger down and the other fingers up just slightly. And we want to get that snap and bounce, right? I would always try to take some video of yourself shooting as well and see if you can see that snap and bounce. If you get that snap and bounce, it's a great way to get that snap on the ball and a great way to finish your flow. All right, if this video helped you out, do me a huge favor, hit that like button, and then hit to the comment section down below and let me know what sort of video you want to see next. This is a channel for the people, by the people, and we run pretty much everything out for requests, so leave it down below and hopefully we'll get to it. And if you're new to shot mechanics, you're gonna want to do two things. Number one, hit that subscription button. We put out videos every week and they're all gonna get you better, I guarantee it. And you might as well turn on the notifications while you're at it. And the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is either click the button down here or the link in the description and get a free copy of my seven day shooting challenge. This is a seven day challenge that's gonna change the way you think about training your jumper and it'll probably increase your, your shooting percentage the very first time you try it. But over seven days, you're gonna see some huge results. Again, I'm Coach Colin Castell with Shot Mechanics Basketball. Thanks for watching and until next time, splash on.